It's time for the latest Running Channel monthly show. Your installment of all the latest running news, launches and advice that you could ever dream of. Yeah, we have got a really exciting show coming up for you, including the return of our treadmill challenge with resident Running Channel physio, Money Plus. Loads of really useful running tips for you too. Here is a glimpse of what you can look forward to. We are coming to the memorial. This iconic monument here, it was actually the discovery of British summertime as we know it as today. My one thing with trail shoes is that I don't want it to sound like I'm wearing rugby boots. Sarah wants to win all the time, she said, every single time. This time, she's not going to We're kicking off this month with Inside Track, our time to show you all the cool running launches this month that we think you should know about. Yeah, now April showers are just around the corner here in the UK, so it might be time to get some trail shoes at the ready. And if you're in the market for a new pair, then Hoka might have the ones for you with their newly released Beat Goat 5. Sarah has been testing these out for us. I love getting out on the trails. So when I heard that Hoka were releasing their new Speed Goat 5 shoe, I got very excited. Also, because the Speed Goat 3 was my first ever trail shoe purchase and is probably the shoe that I've done most of my trail running in up until this point. So I've got the fives on, let's take them for a run and see how they do. So the shoe is described by Hoka as having simply less weight and more traction. Two things which you're definitely looking for in a trail shoe. It can be really annoying to have a heavy shoe weighing you down. And of course you want traction to keep your feet glued to the ground and not slip about everywhere. First impressions at the box are these shoes feel great. They do feel lighter than definitely the Speedgoat 3s. I haven't had the 4s on my feet so I can't comment on that. But they definitely feel a little bit more street lined um, than previous versions of the speed goat and traction wise I mean it's a nice beautiful dry day today in the forest that I'm running through but they do feel like they would give me grip and actually a proper test isn't a proper test if you don't go in a puddle and there's one right there so let's run through the mud yeah no slippage no slippage at all <laughs> Another nice thing about this shoe is that my one thing with trail shoes is that I don't want it to sound like I'm wearing rugby boots. Sometimes that's necessary if you're on really, really technical terrain, but if you're on something like this, where it's super groomed, basically almost concrete in the summer, then I just want to feel like I'm wearing a shoe with a little bit more kind of padding underneath so that the rocks don't hurt my feet. And that is what these do. It doesn't feel really kind of loud and shouty. So that's a big tick from me. Run all finished. Light, comfy, and just easy to wear. That is my three things to sum up the Speedgoat 5s. If you're looking for a pair of trail shoes that you can chuck on, hit the trails, no fuss, feels like a normal trainer, but acts like a trail shoe, then definitely go and check them out. Thank you, Sarah. Those shoes look awesome. Now for some more March shoe news with Anna. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rick. Well, actually, this month, and spring in particular, is really busy for new shoe launches, yeah. so I'll hand back to you for some others as well. But we're going to stick with Hoka's to start with, because they've also, this month, released the new Carbon X 3, which is the update to their super speedy okay. carbon-plated Carbon X and Carbon X 2. And they've got the brand new Max Supersonic as well, so that's an everyday trainer and that's got a bouncy new foam in it too. Oh, nice, okay, moving on to New Balance. If you are a fan of their shoes, they've released an update to their 880 range. Uh, the new version 12, this is kind of a everyday shoe, I'd say. They've constructed the foam to take a lot of the hit out of your heel strike, which is something I've been looking for in a trainer a lot recently. Um, and they've also moved around the cushioning and breathability at the top as well, so quite a lot going on there. On's been busy this month too. They've got two brand new releases. One of them is very interesting looking indeed. So it's the Cloud Monster. Oh, I love the name. Well, it definitely lives up to the name, Rick. Yeah, so how it's come? Got, well, it's got massive cushioning. So I think it actually looks a bit like the platform shoes that I used to wear in the 90s, Spice Girls. Oh yeah, um, dispersing your heel strike. I don't think, no. No? No, I don't think so. Okay. I think they'd be quite good for like a, a long run, because I right. feel like, so they claim that the energy return from them keeps runners' legs fresh. 
Wow, how, how does that, that work? Well, because your legs aren't doing as much of the work because they're shoes like springing back so the energy yeah. return that you get from shoes. That's what all the tech is these days yeah, in, yeah, in running like shoes, it, isn't like it? it. Um, so yeah, I'd quite like to try those out actually because they look monstrous, hence the name. Very good. They've also launched the Cloud Vista this month. So that's billed as a trail shoe for runners who live in urban areas. So this is a really nice one um, for sort of a gateway shoe for new trail runners. So okay. as we sort of go into the spring and then into the summer, it's much nicer to explore the trails for the first time when the weather's nice. Moving on to books now, and um, Matt Wyman has got one out this month called Failure is an Option. Key is an option, <laughs> not not. Um, this is an incredible tale of how he did the Dragon's Back, which goes coast to coast in Wales, 380 kilometres, and it is some challenge, I tell you. And I think you actually said to me before, I quite fancy that. Yeah, why not? Really? I watched a documentary about the year that Matt did it as well. It was like a heat wave year and it was so tough. I am under no illusion that Dragon's Back is a race to be respected though, so I wouldn't do it for a couple of years yet. I've got a lot of work to do on my old ultra running before I would take it on, but yeah. You have to go across Crib Goth and yeah, that's that Snowden. Really, yeah, and it goes from Conwy Castle to Cardiff Castle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks stunning. Absolutely uh, stunning. Uh, the other thing about Matt is he's an amazing author. Yeah. He's done loads of books. I think he wrote one book with a foreword from Sir David Attenborough as well. Yeah, he so. did. Yeah, Our Planet, I think it was. Yeah, and I think he did one with Gareth Southgate as well. And he's written a load of children's books too. So yeah, he knows what he's doing with his writing. He, he knows what he's doing with his running. Probably a good book to read. It really is. <laughs> And then finally, we've got a couple of running announcements that have been made this month. Ooh. Oh, exciting. First up, World Championship Mountain Runners Killian Jornet and Emily Forsberg have joined Coros to be their new pro ambassadors, which Ooh. is very exciting. And they teamed up with co-founder Lewis Wu for a business meeting in the Norwegian mountains to seal the deal. What a nice place for Runners meeting. are bonkers, aren't they? Yeah, we are. <laughs> You've got an announcement too, haven't you, Rick? I have. My announcement is that Gym Plus Coffee is now the official activewear partner of the Great Run Series for the next two years. And do you know who's going to be taking part in the Great Run Series? Andy. It is Andy. Kept that up his sleeve, didn't he? He did. He's running the 10K in Manchester, so oh. good luck to him. We'll Only keep you 10K. posted. Only 10K. He needs, needs to, to be do, a marathon. He needs to do much more. He really needs to pull his finger out. Anyway, have you got any launches or announcements that you think we should know about? Then do let us know, and we might be able to feature them in the monthly show next month. Have you been staying in the loop? Well, we have got the latest running news for you right here, right now, right here. Right now, that is a great running song. Anyway, Rick, you've got a bit of news for us, haven't you? Oh, I have, it's a boy. <laughs> uh, and also, it's been quite a big month for my knee, so I've been for a catch up with Sarah. If you're not already familiar with In The Loop, every month I bring along a guest or fellow presenter to talk about our favourite news stories from the month. And this month is the turn of Rick Kelsey. Wow, <laughs> lovely to meet you on a park bench. <laughs> on a park bench, look at that. <laughs> now, you've got a bit of news yourself this month, Rick. How yeah. are you doing? So, six weeks post-surgery, had the osteotomy, which is when they basically cut your tibia in two. And, but watching you guys run around tracks and get incredibly active the last few weeks has been Bonkers frustrating. Oh no. But don't worry, you'll be back in no time. Yes, I will be back running very soon ish. Very soon, yeah. watch this space. If you want to hear more Hopefully. updates from Rick, make sure you're following us on all our social channels because you're providing regular updates and a new episode of Recovery best title ever yeah. will be coming <laughs> very soon as well now into the elite world mm -hmm. Tokyo Marathon was this month yeah. and Cosguy and Chip Kipchoge absolutely smashed it Kipchoge ran a 202, 202. marathon and Cosguy ran a 216 I mean that's not far off his record that no 202. it's absolutely phenomenal and the fact that these people can just keep bashing out incredibly fast times like a Sunday run. Yeah, it's just their, it's just their average yeah, run. Yeah. Also from the world of elite running, um, the indoor British and European mile record has been broken this month. Oh yeah. Kerr, who ran 348. 348 for an indoor mile. 
It feels like there's a lot going on records-wise and times-wise mm. at the moment. It feels like that kind of, I don't know if it's the time of year or people are just kind of like really getting out there and pushing boundaries at the moment. But there's a lot going on, isn't there, in running world? Yeah, I think it is that kind of post-pandemic. Yeah. People have an agenda and they are going out there and doing it. Have you got an agenda? Are you currently trying to break some PBs? Let us know in the comments and we'll see you next month for some more running news. Every month, runners are going to put their bodies and minds to the test as they compete in the treadmill challenge. That's right. The questions cover a range of topics, including general knowledge, some very important life questions and running channel facts. This month, Sarah's putting the work in. She's back on the treadmill and she is head to head against resident running channel physio Manny Butt, who will take the treadmill crown. Who do you think is going to win? Oh, I'm excited to see this, but Manny. Yeah, I think Manny too. Sarah's general knowledge was not great last time. Not ideal. Sarah wants to win all the time, she said. Every single time. This time, she's not gonna. <laughs> okay, you ready? Ready. Are you ready back to lose the at the treadmill challenge? I'm back on the treadmill <laughs> and ready to go. Ready okay. to lose. So the rules are as follows. We will both start off at marathon pace Woo! and then we will answer questions. We read out questions for the other person. Do you wanna go first or second? I'll go first. Okay, bold. Yes. So Manny will answer a question first. Mm -hmm. If he gets the question right, I have to put my speed up by one kilometre an hour. If he gets the question wrong, he has to put his speed up by one kilometre an hour. And no cheating here, you've got to press the button ten times. Ten times, okay, one yeah. kilometre an hour. All right, cool. Right, ready? ready? Should we get up to speed? Yep, let's go. Let's do it. Okay, question master, let's go. What, what is the most it? pop... Oh, oh sorry, are you go. It. What is the most popular city in the world? Um, That's a big word. Tokyo. Yes! Oh, no. Boom! I go up one, right? You're reading for me now. How many medals did Team GB win at the 2012 Olympic Games? Oh, uh, oh, I don't know. 12? Ah, put it up, put it up, so put it up. Wrong. Put it up. Um, which planet is closest to the sun? Wow, uh, Saturn. Oh. Ah, up you go with your speed. When is the longest day of the year? Longest day? Uh, oh, I know this is before my birthday. June the 21st. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> what is the flattest UK marathon? Ooh. That's a good question. Ooh. Flattest UK marathon. Uh, Thorny Lake. I don't know. Manchester! Oh, up you go, right. Manny! How many lines are in a haiku? Um, ooh, I think five. Three! No. Ah, let's go! Let's go! I'm going first. Fourteen! Okay, what is the most popular breed of dog in the UK? Oh, man. A lot um, of dogs. Pub? Pub? No, incorrect! Put your speed up! Manny's at three. Eighty points. Five. Hi, Lord. Name the first king of England. Sarah. Um, James the first. Whoa! <laughs> Never knew I that. I do not know who that is. That's a good fact. Who held the men's marathon record before Kipchoge? Oh. Um. The Kelly. I know it's not. Uh, up you go! Put your speed up! 19.5. Oh. Which ocean is the largest? Pacific! Yes! Uh, put your speed up! Ah, oh, he is off! I could not do Yes! I was very close. I tell you what, Manny's general knowledge, not ideal either, is it? No. <laughs> Tell you what, I need a uh, sit down after all that. Maybe a coffee. I have just had surgery, you know. Oh, you never mentioned it. Really. <laughs> Do you want me to go make one? Yeah. All right. <laughs> now, the eagle eyed among you may have spotted little bags on our set in this video. That's because Exhale Coffee are kindly sponsoring this month's show. 
Exhale is the UK's first organic speciality coffee that's optimised for health and performance. Their founder Alex is a keen ultra runner and told us he sourced his coffee from farms specifically to maximise the good bits and keep out the bad, such as mycotoxins and pesticides. Now with Exhale, you're getting the performance boost from the caffeine as with other coffees, but uniquely Exhale has almost three times as many polyphenols as your average coffee, which have been shown to improve both sprint and endurance performance. So it's a win-win. Polyphenols and antioxidants also help recovery, and one cup of Exhale coffee has the same amount of antioxidants as 12 punnets of blueberries. Head to Exhale's website via the link in the description and use the code TRC for 40% off your first bag in a fully flexible, no commitment subscription, or to find out a bit more about them. Hello. Here's your coffee, mate. Ah, cheers to you. <sighs> and cheers to you. <laughs> now it's time for Ask TRC. Make sure you keep sending your questions in for Ask TRC. We love going through them every month. We've got some great ones this month. But if you have got something that you want to ask us, be it a burning running question, a would you rather, a question for Rick, whatever it is, just send it to Ask TRC <laughs> at therunningchannel.com. Rick, are you going to kick off this month? Yeah, I'll kick off. Why not? If it's a question for me, it might go on for a while. But this one's from Toby and it's relatively short. So here he goes. <laughs> Hi folks, I've been running for about two years and I've always used an all-rounder support shoe for everything. He's got mild pronation and he says, would I be okay with some neutral racing shoes or would it be better to try and find some shoes that are geared for racing but still offer some level of support? What a great question. Keep up the good work. This channel has been super helpful throughout my lockdown journey. So thank you very much. That's really nice, Toby. Okay, so to kick off straight away, running shoes are all individual and finding the perfect shoe will be a case of trial and error. Now you mentioned in the long version of your email that you use the Adrenaline GTS shoe. Now I just wanna talk a little bit about heel drop here. That has got a 12 millimeter heel to toe drop. Uh, that is pretty big. So if you're planning on switching to something like a hocker, which has a very small heat hill drop, this could cause you some big problems straight away. So have a look at what you're going for. Try and try some lots of different ones on and also get your feet measured to see what your gait is like because, you know, the shape of our feet and our running style does change a lot as well. So mm. what you were running at when you were 21 may be very different to when you're 41, as you've tried different ways, different shoes, uh, you know, cadence might have changed, and this all changes your style. So just because you've had your, your shoes tested one way 20 years ago doesn't mean it'll be the same now. Yeah. Is that something that you'd probably back up on that? Yeah, definitely. And also from a female perspective too, gait analysis can change if you put yeah. on weight or if you've had a baby, if you're pregnant, like that can change things too. So our feet are always changing. I used to be a heel striker, really like strike on my mm. heels when I landed, but now I'm a real tiptoe striker because I thought that I had to change the way that I run. So that really knackered up my calves from changing heel to toe too quickly. So what you're saying there is if you're going to go from a shoe that's got a 12 millimeter heel to toe drop to some of it's these really large. fast carbon racing shoes that are yeah. much lower in heel to toe drop, then you could cause yourself some kind of injury. It's probably also worth, Toby, um, talking about if you look at the top of the range shoes, which are all the carbon plated ones, most of these brands do one that is just a level down, which yeah. is a little bit cheaper. And, uh, you know, from, from experience, some of the fastest carbon plated shoes are not actually the comfiest and most supporting shoes. No, that's true. And, and can be a bit wobbly actually. Well, yeah, so Toby's in Brooks already. I love the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2s. Yes. But you're talking about the ones that are a bit cheaper. The next one down from that, the Tempos, they are probably a little bit more supportive than perhaps They've the They've got a bit more padding in them. So, yeah. Yes, looking at something like that's not a bad shout either. And you know, head to a specialist local retailer if you can, try them out. I know you might not be able to actually go and run in them, but if you can have a proper walk around and really do have a look at that heel to toe drop, uh, bearing in mind what you're coming from and what you want to go to. I hope that helps. <laughs> yeah, and most running shops will have treadmills inside as well, so you can give him a good run out. So our final question this month comes from Les Edwards. So he's been running on and off for five years and he's been regularly running three to four times a week 
for the last year. Now, Les's problem is he's in a bit of a rut. So he's trying to get his 5K time under 40 minutes, but he's really struggling with it and wants some tips to help get faster. Firstly, I'd say, Les, don't give up on you. You're just in a rut. Great killer song. <laughs> it's a very good killer song. Um, so for the actual advice, Les, um, variation. So are you running your three to four runs a week just going out and running 5K? Because if that's the case, then it's pretty simple to mix it up and get you a little bit quicker here. So if you're going out and running all of those runs at the same pace, same distance, what you need to do is train either side of the distance. So do some shorter, faster stuff and some longer, slower stuff. So for example, Andy, who you see on this channel sometimes, he used to be a 1500 meter Olympian, right? Yeah. But he'd still go out and do a long run on the weekend that was like 10 miles plus. Yeah. To train for a 1500. Mm -hmm. So for your 5k you're going to want to go out and do some longer endurance stuff which is a bit slower pace than your 40 minute 5k but you're also going to want to do some shorter faster stuff so that you can meet somewhere in the middle exactly. and get a little bit yeah. quicker and the other thing is you know as well as variation like anna says something no one will tell you is actually just stop for a second and have you have a break I know it's, we're on the running channel and we probably wouldn't say this, but give yourself a week off, reset, and then go again. Do something else for a week, go swimming for a week, go cycling for a week, and then come back and try your variation. So you reset the whole clock. That's a very good tip. Also, this is the one that I thought you were going to say, Rick. Strength and conditioning. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, but I just thought it was too obvious. Resistance training. Yeah. So doing stuff other, like Rick said, kind of, in that week off, but consistently doing resistance training and strength training to make you stronger, which will then help you get quicker. And then the final thing as well is maybe try and work on your cadence. So cadence is the number of steps per minute that you take. We've got a whole video about this coming out super soon, so make sure you check that out. But if you are able to count the number of steps per minute that you're doing at the moment and try and up that by around 5%, to try and basically take more steps quicker, then you will up your pace. So hopefully that's helped. That's all the questions for this month, but don't forget if you want to ask us something that you may be a little bit embarrassed to ask your friends or you actually just don't know the answer to, do get in contact with us. Drop us a message in the comments or send us an email to asktrc at therunningchannel.com. Now it's time for scene on my run. I am here at Swanley Station to go on a run with Matt, who you might know as Runderground on YouTube. He finished running the London Tube Map last year and he's currently running the London Rail Network. And here he is. Hello. <laughs> Hello, should we go for a run? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and we're off. See you later, Swanley. Well, this kind of area falls within London, so Swanley is uh, just in Kent. So we're in St. Mary Cray. This building dates back to as early as the 15th century. Wow. So it's one of the oldest buildings. What is it now? Uh, I believe it's residential, so I think they're like filming someone's house. But <laughs> <laughs> So how did running the tube come about? Well, I'd moved to London in 2017 and I've, well, I've always loved running, I've always loved railways and so for me I wanted to explore all the different areas and um, I was getting off the um, tube at Ealing Common and I was like, hmm, like, have people like <laughs> ran the tube map or like, you know, done anything? And a few people have um, and so for me I wanted to document it and um, it just kind of like flourished, flourished from there. Right, we are coming to the memorial. This iconic monument here. It was actually the discovery of British summertime as we know it as today. So the guy that's behind it is Sir William Willett who was local to that of Chislehurst. He proposed a equivalent of like the British summertime uh, almost like a pamphlet <laughs> back in the day <laughs> of like we need to change the time. Now he wasn't alive long enough to see it come to fruition however the catalyst to make it come to fruition um, was World War One. So it was to make workers more efficient and uh, you know to get people out and about like working like up and about um, early in the morning and spending uh, you know their time working to the evening. 
William Willis is none other than, I think it's the great, great grandfather of Chris Martin from Coldplay. So we've just arrived at our final destination. Yes. A couple of quick fire questions to round off. Hit me. What keeps you motivated? Actually like doing something with my life. I think do no 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 but seriously yeah. I think yeah, it's yeah. giving me such a sense of purpose from doing all of this and um And it's I more than just running, isn't it? It's oh like God, so, so much, more. much more. For sure. Have you ever run any tube or trains abroad? Uh, not yet. So the next thing is running every metro system around the UK, but I would love to run like each rail operator across the country and like each railway station in the UK. Yeah. But I mean, we'll see. But that's oh, like the are ultimate you get a goal. Are you going, going everywhere? I should f***ing up, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need a van or a yeah, train. Yeah, an old train. <laughs> or a train. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, well best of luck. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Thank you. Have you got an epic challenge coming up that you think we should know about? Well, we generally would like to hear from you. Drop us a DM or email us, community at therunningchannel.com, and you could be featuring on next month's show. That's right, we are now at the end of this oh. month's monthly show. Ooh. Thank you so much for sticking with us all the way through to the end. We will see you next time on The Running Channel. <laughs>